present value of any commodity is an important term to refer in today's frame of time. Something that worth a penny today might worth half penny tomorrow. Applied Finance has evaluated this issue and provided its solution by the name of present value. This entire tutorial is all about present value of a commodity. Let us check out the contents that we are going to cover in this presentation before diving more into it. This tutorial would be starting by throwing some lights over intuition behind present value and then discounting rates as well as compounding of cash would be discussed in details. Fundamental principle of present value principle would be elaborated later one followed by cash flow types and discounting mechanics. Three types of cash flow namely, simple cash flows, annuities and growing annuities would be discussed here while the two types of cash flow would be taught later on. The lecture involves quite interesting applications that can save you a bunch of dollars if you apply them wisely to your own personal cases. Let us discuss the reason behind learning the concept of present value. There are three reasons why a dollar tomorrow is worth less than a dollar today. Dot first one is that, all individuals prefer present consumption to future consumption. To induce people to give up present consumption you have to offer them more in the future. Second one is the fact that, when there is monetary inflation, the value of currency decreases over time. The greater the inflation, the greater the difference in value between a dollar today and a dollar tomorrow. While the third one is that, if there is any uncertainty, risk, associated with the cash flow in the future, the less that cash flow will be valued. The mechanism for factoring in these elements is the discount rate. The discount rate can be defined as a rate at which present and future cash flows are traded off. It incorporates three things basically. First of them is, preference for current consumption because of preference of current consumption is greater the discount rate would be higher. The second of them is expected inflation. If the inflation is expected to be high the discount. offered to public would definitely be higher. The third one is uncertainty in cash flows of future. The more higher the risk of cash flow disruption, the more higher discount rate would be. It must be noted that a higher discount rate will lead to a lower value for cash flows in the future. The discount rate is also an opportunity cost, since it captures the returns that an individual would have made on the next best opportunity. Discounting future cash flows converts them into cash flows and present value dollars. Just a discounting converts future cash flows into present cash flows, while compounding converts present cash flows into future cash flows. Let us discuss the fundamental principle of present value. It states that the cash flows at different points in time cannot be compared and aggregated. All cash flows have to be brought to the same point in time, before comparisons and aggregations are made. For the intuition purposes it clarifies that cash must be compared and aggregated by keeping the tie value of money in respect. For an instance, a million dollar investment 100 years back must not be considered as a million dollar investment today. It must be compounded using the inflation rate increased over 100 years. There are various types of cash flows and discounting principles. Famous five types cash flows adopted by every other billion dollar company includes, simple cash flows, annuities, growing annuities, perpetuities as well as growing perpetuities. The next section of remaining tutorial would be discussing these types in more depth along with practical and applied examples. A simple cash flow is basically a single cash flow in a specified future time period. The convention adopted to present it involves a horizontal line on the left while present value of cash being flowed is written as its superscript and the time is written as its subscript. The present value of any cash flow can be evaluated by using the mentioned formula, 
where R is representing discount rate in it and CF is cash flow value at that time. The future value can also be finding out by using the same parameters in just a little bit different computational mode as shown in the second formula of future value of simple cash flow. Let us consider an interesting applied example on the topic of our discussion. The power of compounding is shown in this scenario where the time values of stocks, bonds and bills are determined. In a study of returns on stocks and bonds between 1926 to 1992, Ibbotson and Sinquifield found that stocks on the average made 12.4%, treasury bonds made 5.2% and treasury bills made 3.6%. The following table provides the future values of $100 invested in each category at the end of a number of holding periods minus 1, 5, 10, 20, 30 and 40 years. The formula of present value taught in previous slide can be calculate this table. The frequency of compounding affects the future and present values of cash flows. The stated interest rate can deviate significantly from the true interest rate. For instance, a 10% annual interest rate, if there is semi-annual compounding, works out to 10.25% as calculated in the slide. Similarly the effective annual rate can be calculated at different frequencies of return by using the given range of formulas. The second type of cash flows are annuities. An annuity is a constant cash flow that occurs at regular intervals for a fixed period of time. For an instance if A is an annuity amount in the figure shown then 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 would be the constant interval of time where it would be dissipated. The present value of an annuity can be calculated by taking each cash flow and discounting it back to the present, and adding up the present values. Alternatively, there is a shortcut that can be used in the calculation where A is annuity, R is discount rate and N is representing number of years in the shown formula. Let us solve a computational example of present value of an annuity. The present value of an annuity of $1000 for the next 5 years, assuming a discount rate of 10% is $3791 as calculated on slide. The notation that will be used in the rest of these lecture notes for the present value of an annuity will be PV bracket A comma R comma N. The reverse of this problem, is when the present value is known and the annuity is to be estimated. It can be calculated using this formula and it is annotated as a bracket PV comma R comma N. The future value of an end of the period annuity can also be calculated by using this formula and it would be annotated as FV bracket A comma R comma N. Let us take an example to find out the future value of an annuity. The future value of $1,000 each year for the next 5 years, at the end of the 5th year after assuming that a 10% discount rate is available would be size $1,105. The previously mentioned formulas are interchangeable and can lead us to drive other parameters from it. It can help us iterate unknown boundary conditions of any severe problem as well. If you are given the future value and you are looking for an annuity then using this formula would be quite wise as it is easier to use and simpler to understand. R is again the rate of discount where FV is future value of annuity, that has been given to us already and N is number of years whose future value was given. Let us look into another application to understand the time value of money. Assume that you want to send your newborn child to a private college, when he gets to be 18 years old. The tuition costs are $16,000 per year now and that these costs are expected to rise 5% a year for the next 18 years. Assume that you can invest, after taxes, at 8%. Expected tuition cost, 
year 18 years from now is calculated to be $38,506 while the present value of 4 years of tuition cost is calculated to be $127,537. If you need to set aside a lump sum now, the amount you would need to set aside would be $31,916. If set aside as an annuity each year, starting one year from now would be $3,405. By using all of this information one can easily save for their college tuition fee well before time. Now we are going to discuss the third type of cash flow which is commonly named as growing annuity. A growing annuity is a cash flow growing at a constant rate for a specified period of time. If A is the current cash flow, and G is the expected growth rate, the timeline for a growing annuity looks as follows. present value of a growing annuity is quite important to evaluate while it can estimate it in all cases, but one, where the growth rate is equal to the discount rate, using the following model. It must be noted that the specific case possess its present value equals to the nominal sums of the annuities over the period, without the growth effect. This other types of cash flows and their applications are part of the second lecture about time value of money. Understanding the second part of the lecture would elaborate more concepts and thus the understanding.